Hey guys, Tom itself here, continuing with part 3 of my aiming in Call of Duty and Battlefield series. Taking a quick look at frame rates, interlacing, v-sync, and such things. Because there is a significant difference between the two games, especially on console. So let's get to it. Alright, our first topic, frame rate. Question is usually phrased as, what's the fastest frame rate you can see? A better way to put this might be, what's the fastest frame rate we need to make things look smooth? Especially for video games, that's what we're really concerned with. Now, a lot of it comes down to how fast is what you're trying to watch moving, and in movies you'd have things like motion blur, but video games are just still images. You can't tell that there's no motion blur on any individual frame, so you need more to make it look smooth. I'll put a link to a website with a much more detailed and better description than I can give in a video uh, down in the description. On consoles, Call of Duty runs at 60 frames a second, Battlefield runs at 30. That is, unless you get a whole bunch of stuff on the screen and start causing things to slow down, you get frame drops. It does happen in both games. Alright, so at first you think, oh, okay, so there are like 16.6 milliseconds between frames in Call of Duty, and twice that in Battlefield. That's like a whole other 16.6 milliseconds you have to wait between frames. That's really significant, isn't it? Well, in in terms of the delay, it doesn't help anything, but that's not the worst part of it. Alright, but we're interested in things being fluid and smooth, because we want to tell how fast things are moving around on our screen, or how much they're accelerating, or speeding up, or slowing down. So the best way I have to explain this is to say, hey, how many frames do you need to see how fast something is moving on the screen? But fairly simple, you need at least two, right? To compare one that started out here, and then it got here in this amount of time, yeah, it's a fairly simple kind of thing. Now, if you want to talk about acceleration, how fast things are speeding up or slowing down, then you need at least three frames. <laughs> so, this, you're going to see where this is going. In Battlefield, if you need at least three frames to see acceleration, you're talking about 100 milliseconds, a tenth of a second. And you know, we're starting to get into the length of time that you can actually talk about instead of 16.6 milliseconds. In Call of Duty, it's half that, 50. And, yeah, that becomes a very significant difference in how smooth things feel. The difference between 30 and 60 frames per second on a fast-paced game like Call of Duty or Battlefield is so obvious to me, I almost consider not doing this next part. But I imagine there are still a few people out there saying to themselves, you know, I'm not sure I can tell the difference. But, okay, so here, now one of the issues I ran into with making this video is that YouTube tops out at 30 frames per second, so we're going to have to <laughs> do some other stuff. But uh, I invite you to try this if you're not convinced. There are lots of ways to do this. Some of them are probably quite a bit more straightforward, but I'm going to use this chance to plug a friend. So relevant links are in the description. First is Culprit 008's previous videos on Twitch.tv. Just pull up one of the Battlefield ones, and they're at 60 frames per second. Watch a couple seconds of it, you'll see it's nice and smooth. Then, go over to his YouTube page under the same name, Culprit008, and watch one of his Battlefield 3 videos that are limited to 30 frames per second by YouTube. Guy has pretty much exactly the same settings between Twitch and YouTube, but the Twitch stuff looks so much smoother because it's at 60 frames per second instead of 30. I should also note that a lot of things in Call of Duty are tied to your frame rate, and the slower your frame rate gets, the more likely you are to get some weird, weird stuff happening. Uh, for example, the big one is the fire rate of your weapon. There's a value hard-coded into the game as a maximum fire rate, but then the actual fire rate you get is going to vary with the frame rate that you have. I'll link to a video Drifter did if you want some more details. There are lots of things in Call of Duty that do that. Uh, the most significant example, I think, is the death machine in Black Ops 2 is hard-coded for 1,800 rounds a minute. If you fire it on Xbox, it comes in at just under 1,200 because of that <laughs> the uh, fire rate being tied in part to your frame rate. Uh, it's not always a, sig a significant drop, is that that's the, <laughs> I think that's the most extreme example I, I could come up with. But in general, the slower the frame rate, the weirder that kind of stuff is going to be, and the more it's going to vary. It's the, so Call of Duty needs that 60 frames per second in order for things to play normally. Battlefield can get away with lower stuff in the game engine kind of works away in the background. You just have to deal with the refresh rate, the frame rate being slower. Let's get back to that discussion about how smooth things are, or how many frames it takes, or how long it takes to see how fast things are moving, or how fast things are accelerating. Now, in control theory, or theory and practice, one of the ways you can try to look at things or control them is to use derivative control, or simply just how fast things are changing. 
how it can be very useful, but it's something we typically try to avoid unless we really need it, because, well, it has some issues. First, if you were just to try to build a normal circuit, resistors and capacitors and that kind of stuff, it would actually be really hard to make a good one. <laughs> In digital logic, though, you're still left with some issues. For example, how long apart are your measurements, and hopefully you know exactly how far apart they are, and your measure, your actual measurement, is there any noise in it? Because that's really going to screw things up. The random fluctuations in there. Uh, that was quite the aside, but it's it's my background, so it's what I'm comfortable with. But what does that have to do with the rest of this video? Well, Battlefield on consoles has screen tearing. It's not a feature. It's fairly obvious. If you're looking for it, you've probably noticed it anyway. But let me explain. Your screen, be it monitor or TV, is going to update at a certain rate, and the game is going to try and keep up. Be ready with that next frame when your screen is ready for it. Now, if it's not, one of two things is going to happen. Now, you, either nothing's going to happen, you're going to keep that old frame, this is what happens in Call of Duty, or it's going to send what it has and keep the old stuff. And that's what Battlefield does, and that's where you get screen tearing from. Battlefield renders or draws out each frame, starting at the bottom, working its way up to the top. And if it's time for your screen to get another frame, but it's not finished yet, it'll just send what it has. What happens next can depend on your console settings, your screen settings, and the connection, the display connection between the two. Most of us are going to be running 720p at 60 frames per second. However, some of you might be running 1080i. Uh, that whole interlacing thing is still around, and it's a bit of a mess, and it does make a difference in this case. First, let's talk about that 60 frames per second option, 720p, while Battlefield is running at 30 frames per second. First, you say the 60 is unnecessary, it's faster than the game. Why does it matter? Well, the screen tearing means that it does matter. I'm going to slow some footage down here a whole lot so you can see what I'm talking about. The game may not finish its update. You may be able to get some screen tearing, but... For that next 60th of a second, it will still try to finish updating that frame so that you'll get at least a full one without any screen tearing. Now, it'll be delayed 16.6 milliseconds behind, but you'll still get a screenshot without any screen tearing. So what about 1080i, interlaced video? Now, I read the Wikipedia page, and I played Battlefield at 1080i for half a day, and I think this makes sense, but I could be wrong or right for either the wrong or the right reasons, but the, the, reading Wikipedia and looking at the video I recorded, this is what I'm seeing. You might as well call it 1080 30 frames per second. Our displays don't update uh, interlaced, that isn't a thing anymore. And the game will still try to draw from the bottom up to the top. You can't get half the screen updated interlaced at a time. So instead, you just basically take yourself down to 30 frames per second. And as I pointed out with the 720p example, you might get one frame that has some screen tearing, but hopefully the next one at 60 frames per second will be clean. That won't happen at 1080i. And so you'll get long sequences where there is constant screen tearing. And it's, uh, it does make it a little trickier to play. So, in conclusion, don't use 1080i for fast-paced FPS games, especially Battlefield with its screen tearing. God, it's awful. Any idea how annoying it is when the screen tear is below where your crosshairs are, so that your crosshairs are a whole other step behind, especially when you're only going at 30 frames per second? Ah, it's... Anyway, I don't enjoy playing like that, and uh, if you happen to be doing that yourself, I suggest you try switching from I to P, because it's a good thing. Well, that was kind of a strange one-off episode, uh, but it was kind of something I wanted to cover as a distinction between the two games. The next uh, episode in this little series, hope we're getting back to some gunplay skill things, some, uh, some tips, but it's a rather intimidating episode, and I hope to get it out still before the end of May, but uh, we'll see. Anyway, guys, I hope you learned something. Hope you thought it was interesting. Uh, thank you for sticking around, and I will see you next time.